Good afternoon. You're now watching the latest news for December 15. Education, Science and Technological Research Minister Datuk Sri Michael Maninjaung said the proposed Industrial Training Institute ILP, in Syrian should not be scrapped by the Pakatan Harapan federal government. He explained that Sarawak still needs a new ILP for youth to obtain certified skills training and be part of the state's skilled workforce. He added that after a recent meeting with principals and directors of vocational colleges and other skill institutes, they are now operating at full capacity and will need another ILP. He said this at the Surian District Council, MDS Councillors Appreciation Night, held in a hotel in Kuching. The project, costing about 250 million ringgit and approved by the previous Barisan National Government, was scheduled for completion by February 2021, but is now awaiting the final decision of the current Ministry of Finance. Malaysia's Defence Ministry, MINDEF, has received an increased allocation of 15.37 billion ringgit for next year after getting an additional 1.45 billion ringgit for its operating expenditure from the Finance Ministry. According to a statement by the Information Department, the increased allocation was announced by Defence Minister Mohamed Sabu on November 19. The additional allocation is a 1% increase in 2019 compared to 15.49 billion ringgit in 2018. The original allocation for a MINDEF in budget 2019 was at 13.918 billion ringgit, of which a total of 10.27 billion ringgit was for operating expenditure, while another 3.64 billion ringgit was for development purposes. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison stated Australia formally recognizes West Jerusalem as Israel's capital, upturning decades of their Middle East policy. He said Australia recognizes West Jerusalem, which is the seat of the Knesset and institutions of government, as the capital of Israel, but will not move its embassy there immediately. He said this to reporters in Sydney following the, his statement in October, where he said he was open to shifting the embassy. The news came in light of President Donald Trump's decision to move the U.S. embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem in May, which delighted Israel but infuriated and upset the wider Arab world and its Western allies. That's all the latest news for now. I am Razi Ahmad. Thank you for watching.